Hey guys, it's Avondale, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Walls, where I take you behind the walls of the Knox Crew Game Show. I'd like to remind you, as always, that if you haven't watched today's episode yet, make sure you check the link in the top right-hand corner of the screen so we don't spoil it for you. Now that you've had time to do that, I'm going to turn around and reveal my guest for today. It's Phil, who is Zeltan, who plays Bobby Groove. Hey! How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good, aren't you? Uh, good, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, it's always exciting to talk to the voices behind the Noxcrew Game Show. Nice. Yeah? I'm, I'm glad to be here, I'm glad to be here. I wasn't really aware I was going to be here until about three days ago. Hey, <laughs> definitely excited. It's always a good surprise, that's right. Uh, so today, uh, Phil's going to help me talk about Sands of Time, but first, before we get into the chat, I just wanted to talk about the bug that I had in here real quick, uh, so I can get it out of the way and be done with it. So if you want to follow me up through here, Phil, we'll actually head over to the redstone. Uh, drop down here. Uh, so if you guys will remember, I just started doing the API videos uh, about the system that I built to run the Noxcrew Game Show. And I talked about the Master Clock, and I mentioned that I built it after I had a big bug in a game. Uh, this was the game that bugged out. Uh, here's the issue, right? We're always keeping our contestants in uh, in adventure mode, right? Game mode 2. Uh, so they can't break any blocks, get out of the maps, blah, blah, blah. And this timer was posing an issue because uh, I couldn't really have them place sand against just this wool like you can normally do that but it's tough to manage that when people are dropping blocks picking them up breaking blocks it's tough to guarantee that you've got the right uh, data tag on the block to allow them to be able to place it here so my bypass around that was just past this little line of stairs here in the ground uh, they were going to get put into uh, survival mode if they were in here so they could come up place the sand wherever and then when they came back out they would be in adventure mode right so that's what this clock does over here. It just puts them in game mode uh, if they're in a certain area. And it also uh, kills uh, items and entities that fly through the door at the end of the game. But that's sort of irrelevant. Anyways, when I set this up and uh, tested this game, it was before we actually uh, built the master clock. And it was before we built the clock that controls the game modes of the players on the server. So this worked fine uh, when we tested it. And then this map sat on the Decision Dome through the entire quarterfinal round uh, without getting played. And I had the game mode clock up and running. And then we finally get to play this game in the semifinals. And wouldn't you know it, uh, they get into the game and they can't play sand there. And it was because the clock that I had made at the spawn chunk was overriding this clock here uh, to keep it from working. And so I went to the spawn chunk, we reset the team that was in there, it was uh, Shed's turn. Uh, we, I froze the part of the clock that I thought was breaking and started them again. It still didn't work, I went back to the spawn chunk, figured out the other part that was freezing it, <laughs> came back in and we uh, finally were allowed to let them play the game. Uh, to compensate for that on the fly though, uh, before Evac crew's turn, we actually let them go in to this main room in uh, the dungeon here, if you will, and uh, they explored around it and they were able to get about 30 seconds in here, which was just about the same amount of time that Shed had. Uh, so that was how we made, we tried to make it fair on the fly, but um, that was a really unfortunate bug, and again, I just wanted to get it out of the way so we could talk about the game. What'd you think about that, Phil? <laughs> I remember it happening, and um, when we were doing the, the commentary over it, um, I, I remember explaining to, to Lewis, because at the time, Lewis wasn't there. Lewis wasn't there for the bug, and then me and Nox ended up laughing about it for a while, because it was just like, it was such a kind of, you know, just put together, ham-fisted solution. We're like, yeah, don't worry, we'll just give them 30 seconds. It's <laughs> fine, it's fine. And then, uh, I suppose neither of the teams really did anything um, 
groundbreaking with their 30 seconds. They kind of just walked in and they were like, oh, that's like, a nice <laughs> wall. I'm going to look at that wall for 12 seconds of my 30 second time. Yeah, they were like, oh, yeah. there's there's the timer over there. <laughs> that actually brings me to another point. The first time Shed went in there, uh, they were freaking out looking around because they couldn't find the timer. And it took him like 30 seconds to find the timer, and so Nox actually asked them to act like that again when they went back in for the real one. Oh, uh, yeah, I actually, which was yeah, I remember funny. that. We were like, did, did Nox really just tell them <laughs> how to behave? Yeah. Uh, he was he like, did. yes, teacher, yes. He did. It, it was a funny point in the episode. Uh, okay, the so anyway. Crew, where nothing is scripted. <laughs> that's right, there's no rigging in the game show whatsoever. Hey, let's head back in here, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, Shed's turn because uh, they uh, went first after the coin toss. Uh, so there was a couple of things I wanted to talk about specifically from their turn. Uh, the first one was uh, Zafin's mad parkour skills in the first room. I mean, you look at some of these jumps in here. Uh, we have people in the Nox crew who have practiced these multiple times and still can't succeed like he did. Uh, <laughs> it's not an easy series of parkour. Have you ever messed around in here, Phil? Uh, no, this is, I think, one of the only games that I haven't really gotten a chance to play. It's just... And, like, I, I would probably put my parkour skills at, like, mid to, like, maybe to, to slightly none. below average. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I ran somewhere once, yeah. ever again. Right. It's yeah. just, it's kind of, it's always impressive when I watch people play this game for the first time and they have such a good parkour run uh, like that because uh, none of this stuff is easy. Uh, especially this area over here, we had one team just fail that little jump a bunch of times, and uh, yeah, not not an easy course. And uh, Zoltan was really impressive uh, in that area. Uh, Zafin, you said my name. <laughs> Zoltan and yeah, Zoltan. <laughs> and Zoltan. I am everywhere. Look how impressive you are. Uh, yeah, you know, oh, just... geez, I, I I got the mad jumps right now. <laughs> and that yeah. ma that makes me feel extra bad because I just played a UHC with Zafin as well. So uh, <laughs> you'd think I could tell all the Z's apart, but between Zafin and Zoltan and Zapora and Zergen, uh, it's just it's too much for my little heart to handle. Too many Z's. That's right. Uh, He's got sleep on the brain. So so interestingly, uh, as good as Zafin was at parkour. Uh, Poor, poor Mr. Craftman. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he kept falling and injuring himself, didn't he? Yeah, he took uh, probably eight out of his ten hearts of damage from falling. And the other two hearts were the sword he took in the back when they were fighting the zombies. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, because they got, they got overrun, basically, coming through here, because they just kept activating them again. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's the way... That room was actually really hard to balance. Um, we tried five or six times to do something that felt overwhelming but actually wasn't and that was uh, what we ended up coming up with and both teams handled it pretty well yeah I, I you were you were saying to me before we started though that they neither team went for the the optimal strategy for, for this game mode yeah that's fair enough to talk about uh, the optimal strategy of sands of time right you have a three person team and you have this first room here and now every team eventually figured out, okay, one person has to watch the timer, but we've always sort of hypothesized that the ultimate strategy for this game is to just have your first two people who are actually going to explore the temple just come in and run straight through and straight out this door over here. Uh, if they just enter the temple immediately, then they have the most time to get through that part, and this part of the beginning is easy enough that one person can handle it. They can probably complete all of these different puzzles and get all the diamonds in this room in the time that it would take their two teammates to finish the rest of the room in the course and actually, you know, get the ultimate score, even. We'll know for next season when suddenly one of the teams is just like, Oh yeah, I made it through all of Sands of Time without taking a single point of damage, and somehow we got one more diamond than the course actually has. <laughs> I'm sure that would happen. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I'm sure if we use this game again, we'll make sure to uh, give it an upgrade. Uh, did yeah. you see the teams ever come in this room over here? Like, if you fly all the way to the back of the course. Um, oh, yeah, there you are. This room right here. Uh, I believe Skyo made this room, if I remember correctly. And this room has, like, the death parkour all over it. Like, this is just... Both, there were, both teams went in this room and said, nope, and bailed on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like this just jumping around this lava is so scary and the cobwebs think, are so scary 
Yeah, I think the only, like, I wouldn't have tried this jump that you tried a second ago, that one over there. Not a hope would I have tried that. I think I'd have gone for the jump and hopefully let the cobweb catch me. If the cobweb catches me, I'm alive. Yeah, and I think you could break the cobwebs with your sword as well, so maybe that would have been a way to do it, is just jump over here. So I think once you get over here, uh, oh hey, I'm looking hey. at the inside of you. Uh, once you get over here, uh, I think the rest of the room is pretty easy, but it was just funny that both teams uh, came through that room and yeah, said, uh -uh. It's just like, on, to the next room, and <laughs> nope. And they were gone. It was really funny. Uh, I almost did just like a complete U-turn on walking in. Yeah, so I can understand why that room is just, you know, nightmare fuel. Exactly. And it's the furthest room away from the start, so it makes sense that it would be. Uh, let's see. Let's move on a little bit and talk about uh, Evac crew, how they uh, they never really seemed to have a lot of pressure on them in this game, even though they went second. You know, it was more or less they just came in, went about their business, and then left with four more diamonds. They were probably just happy to, you know, get into a game and within about the first 30 seconds of it for the clock to not break. Yeah, no kidding. They're probably just like, yeah, it's perfect. It's working. I'm we didn't so break sorry. anything. So we're not going to be branded as the people who broke it. Right. Oh, it was all my fault. But uh, what I, I, I would do? say, though, that uh, Evac crew were very, like, clear and concise with each other. They had a lot of communication. So did Shed, but I feel a, a lot of Team Shed's chatter was, Oh god, this is scary, we're gonna die. Whereas <laughs> uh, Evac crew were just like, Right, you do this, you do that, you do that, stop taking dumb damage, you know? Yeah, and take a look at one of the biggest decisions they made, right? You know, you have Craftman on the first turn, jumping around on one and a half hearts of health, and he's trying to do parkour, and he dies. And then uh, the second team goes, and they had T-Rex on uh, one and a half hearts of health or so. And he said, uh, hey, how about I take all the diamonds we already have and just go bank them and chill in the hallway? And uh, it's like little decisions like that that a lot of times take games like this and uh, end up making the difference. Because then, you know, Craftman's teammates had to worry about whether they need to get his stuff or not. It completely uh, broke their focus and uh, potentially cost them the game. And Me because... Uh, because... Um, he took all of the diamonds back to the hallway with him at the time. Uh, they didn't have anybody else running around with a massive deficit of diamonds being like, I need to get these back, I need to get these back. Yeah, exactly. And when it came down to it at the very end, they ended up losing two diamonds and it didn't matter. Yeah, he, they had already won when he banked the diamonds. They, I exactly. mean, there's no way they could know and we definitely won't tell them because we want to see how it plays out. But they had a team member get locked in and then commit suicide and <laughs> it didn't matter. In very own trial by fire yeah no kidding it's always funny that we leave this open so you can do that i mean there's no point <laughs> why would we do that i think we're just hoping for somebody to walk in and be like oh the lovely scenery oh, oh my, God. <laughs> my skin it burns us precious <laughs> oh wow not you bad gotta, you this... gotta pull the golem out man see this guy's a voice actor <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've, I've used voices that aren't my own uh, at least once before. No kidding. And actually, yeah. speaking of voice acting, what a segue. Uh, let's yeah. head over segue. to... Segue. Uh, <laughs> let's head over to a, a prettier location and talk a little bit about voice acting, eh? Okie dokie. Alright, so we're over here in the courtyard of the Knockscrew Game Show Factory, uh, out in front of the statues, which, uh, obviously, uh, there's nothing weird about those, right? They're exactly how they're supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, they're exactly how they yeah. should be, here, and here, how turn I around. feel inside. <laughs> turn around, let's, uh, let's compare it. Stay right there. No, come here. Come closer. I'm gonna try to, like, give a side-by-side -side comparison of your size with him. Uh, let's see if I can get close enough. Yeah, take oh, a look well, at that. Look at how identical they look. Oh, well, you know, I've, I've been... <laughs> I've been working out. I've, I suppose that might be why there's a size. I've been working out a little bit. And yeah. Hit, really hitting the gym. Right. You know they have a snack bar in most gyms. <laughs> that makes sense. I knew a guy named Jim once. Oh really? Yeah. What was his Never last again. name? Never again. I actually didn't know his last name. The gym oh, no. who I had envisioned in my head was the caretaker from my primary school. And <laughs> Always, always knew him as being a gym. <laughs> oh wow! Well. And then he, yeah, he'd normally reply with something like, <laughs> and "He's a bit crazy and had very few teeth." Wow. Good guy though. Good guy though. I believe it. Well, uh, hey, while we're over here, let's talk a little bit about uh, 
sort of like how you got involved with the Nox crew and then what it's like to uh, commentate. Okay, well, do you have any questions or would you like me to just explain? Uh, how did you get involved in the Nox crew? Uh, basically, um, Lewis, the guy who voices uh, Johnny Smooth, um, and me are friends through one of our other mutual friends um, named Charlie. But we were playing computer games for probably about like four months, maybe five months, and then this was around the same time that Knox was kind of getting back at Lewis, being like, "Hey, man, yeah, let's start doing Knox recording again." And then uh, it was explained to me that Henry, the old voice actor for Scotty Love, had moved to Australia just kind of on a whim. He was like, "Yeah, Australia needs me right now. <laughs> and I think I need Australia." <laughs> Um, and then Lewis was just kind of like, hey, well, Phil, me and you kind of have a, a really good chemistry. We laugh a lot and stuff when we're playing games. The two of us kind of take over whatever, whatever call we're in and just make each other, you know, unable to speak to laughter. And then Lewis suggested that I be the new commentator in Henry's stead and then showed it to Knox. And originally Knox was like, oh, man, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> It's not really, he's not really doing an American voice. And I was like, yeah, that's because because I'm not American and I'm not trying to do an American voice. Uh, Didn't you try to do an American voice no, though? At, I at, thought, at I thought no you did point. in one of the tests. No, um, it was after I just like just spoke normally, like with my normal voice. Um, he was like, can you just do one? And then people have asked me to do it when Knox was streaming and they were like, can you do an American voice? And I'm just like, I'd really rather not. <laughs> it's the same as I'm sure that, you know, anyone in America, like that's where you're from, Avondale. Um, yeah. Anyone in America who does an Irish accent is just wildly offensive. Oh, no kidding, because we say you know, Irish. Just, oh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh, you know, oh, a bit of an Irish accent. Oh, ta -ta -ta, potato, potato, lucky charms. Whiskey. Top of the morning. Top of the morning too. <laughs> So I wouldn't like to turn around and just be like, uh, well, you know, as the president of these United States, uh, just, I feel that you need to chill your bees, okay? <laughs> I did not, I, I did not, I did not take over for Scott and Love. I would not do that. <laughs> it's just, it's not just, it's just not something that I feel is appropriate. Oh man, I would love to listen to that during a whole episode of the game. Yeah, so. a whole episode is like, oh well, it yeah. looks like these guys done uh, <laughs> like, could you, off. could you these imagine guys, it, oh, look, they, if you had done right, Pipeline Pursuit is, for a half an yeah. hour like that? <laughs> uh, well, uh, it looks like he's rotated that piece and, uh, oh, he's gonna go rotate that piece again. Who <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. Oh, well, you know, I got a dog in the fight, but this dog back here, it don't bite. Never mind me, you know. Well. Wow. Line pursuit. But, it, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> your your accent got better the more you did it there. It well, really did. did. It. It, started my, out, it started out pretty sketchy, but the longer you just did that, the better it got. My American-y was. Yeah, right at yeah, the no, end, I, it was I, really I, starting I, to hit its stride. I do it sometimes, but it's like very inappropriate because normally I just try to do like George W. Bush raving about legalizing cannabis. <laughs> so it's just like, hey man, you know, we need to just legalize it, man. Legalize it. <laughs> and he always looks like he's squinting into the yeah, sun exactly. when he's talking oh, too. You know why I'm squinting, son? Sheba Sheba. <laughs> Little puff puff, man. You know, it's very good. Oh, wow. But yeah, then um, I did some, I just did some takes for Knox, and then at the start he was really sketchy about it, and then we just went for it, and we tried to do one proper one, and then he was a little bit more on board with it, and then as we started getting going in it, what happened was our recordings, which should have taken about 20 minutes to do, would normally take about 35 minutes to do, because me and Lewis would just make each other laugh to the point of hysterics and from that came a lot of like really good vibe and it's why in some of the videos either myself or lewis might seem a little bit crazy just because we're just on a bit of a laughter high at that point and right we just kind of need to throw it out but that's how i got involved with it and um it's like really great because everyone in Knoxville has been super friendly and i'm learning from and it's something that i've been interested in like i've like been doing stupid voices since i was very young and then I got involved with another project because of Lewis as well, with regards to an online trailer for a book series and things like that. So it's you know it's all coming up Phil House. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
Lo- loving it. Copyright McDonald's. Any o- <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What are you trying to say, mate? What are you trying to, is, that a, is that a joke about my size? It's not a joke about your size. You know size. I've been working me, out, bro. It's me trying to not get sued. You know what's funny is when you when you go through my face like that, your eyebrows like disappear before the rest of your head, and it makes it look like you're raising them up. <laughs> like you're just no, like, I am oh. raising them up. I've got a couple of questions for you. So. Oh yeah, what questions do you have for me? How long have you been with an ox crew? I'm, maybe uh, this time I interview you. Oh. How long have you been with the Knox crew? Uh, since September or October of 2013. And so why am I only A little over a year and a half. And why am I only hearing about it today that you're like super in charge of all of the Redstone? Why wasn't I informed? Redstone is my thing in Minecraft as well. I don't know. Have you ever read the credits of the game show or looked at my team speak tag or I don't played look at Super anything. Hole in the Wall or <laughs> No, I've I've seen I've seen the credits and I've seen the thing in Team Speak and I was just like, oh Redstone. Yep. Didn't, <laughs> every didn't single link two time and two I was together. Like, No, every single time I was just like, Oh, Redstone. I'm sure I'll ask him about that eventually. Oh, <laughs> that's fantastic. Today. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking at the beginning of this, and Phil said, I asked Phil uh, if he actually really plays Minecraft, and he said, I do, but mostly I just do Redstone stuff, and I was like, so why haven't we talked before? <laughs> and here we are like an hour later, this recording should take us 20 minutes, and we're like an hour See, into it. <laughs> I do it to everyone. I do it to everyone. People like to talk to me yeah, sometimes. No kidding. Well, you talk yeah. back, and that's important. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, I would, um, literally any time I go into Minecraft, uh, like, I, my friend Luke, right, for example, my friend Luke loves to build these gigantic extravagant houses, and I'm just like, oh, that's, that's really sweet there, I'm gonna go over here, uh, dig straight down a spiral staircase, and then I will make a dwarf home underground, so I don't have to put decorations all over my house, <laughs> and then from that I'll get, like, mega amounts of redstone, and then just redstone the crap out of my house somewhere and just be like see this mountain click button 50 million pistons activate and the whole mountain opens <laughs> that's, that's the kind of stuff that like i i love in minecraft okay so thanks a lot to uh phil slash zoltan slash bobby groove for coming on the show to talk about sands of time thanks for having me on it was absolutely great and Anytime that you want to have me on again, just give me a shout. And yeah. it'll be awesome. Absolutely. I'm sure Maybe we will we can... see you again on my channel sometime soon. Yeah, we can probably make the next one not last. Like, we're literally at this two hours, 52 minutes. Oh, don't you worry. An hour, 52 minutes, Captain uh, Time no, Checker. Oh, yeah, we started at five. Yeah. Sorry, it was just I was I was sitting at my computer at four. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm really sleepy. I hope he gets on li- online. I'm, like, really sleepy. <laughs> But yeah, an hour and 52 minutes. I am the keeper of the time. Fantastic. <laughs> don't, mind, don't worry, that difference in the hour is just because you're American. It's, yeah, it's it is. Sh- it's just all these time zones, man, I'll tell you. Well, anyways, uh, until next time, I've been Avondale. Thanks for watching. And I have been Zoltan! Also, Star Wars. Star Wars. Cool show, man. Could use more rainbows and stuff, though. Oh, I'll get the rainbows. <laughs> yeah, so just, you're gonna, uh, uh, you're gonna become a master at After Effects, and I'm just gonna every time I speak, rainbows are gonna vomit out of my mouth. <laughs> the times we live in, and then I look off, and then you do a star wipe. Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <clears throat> and star wipe. Yeah, do it a little dance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and in some gold there, so it's like <laughs> ching, 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 yeah, and ching. rainbows and yeah. <laughs> four leaf clovers. <laughs> oh uh, man, this, <laughs> what's wrong with this Guinness fountain? Why is it blue? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's blue Guinness. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, it's for I'd, Earth Day. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably still yeah blue Guinness. Like you wouldn't go for green, no. <laughs> No, I guess not. Although gr- green beards don't be a thing, so dumb. <laughs> uh, like, it's a really big thing in America as well, like really big. Yeah. Uh, on Paddy's Day, everyone's like, oh, I need to put this green liquid in my body. This liquid alcohol normally makes me vomit. I wonder what the addition of excess amounts of coloring will do. <laughs> Blah! Green vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Run and change it into some kind of awful frog-breathing dragon. Grah! <laughs>
Oh it's goodness! Like ridiculousness. Do you have any other questions that you'd like to ask, or anything uh, else you want to go over? No, I think we're good. Yeah. I think I'm just... Thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> it was like absolutely great. And any other time, or any time that you need a hand with anything, just give me a shout. Okay, hang on. Let me do an outro though. I just did your outro. No. <laughs> You don't get to speak. This is the Zoltan Show and Starway. <laughs> Need a tag on the block to allow them to be able to place it here. So my bypass around that was just past this little line of stairs here in the ground. Uh, they were going to get put into uh, survival mode if they were in here. So they could come up, place the sand wherever, and then when they came back out, they would be in adventure mode, right? So that's what this clock does over here. It just puts them in game mode uh, if they're in a certain area. And it also uh, kills uh, items and entities that fly through the door at the end of the game. But that's sort of irrelevant. Anyways, when I set this up and uh, tested this game, it was before we actually... Uh, built the master clock and it was before we built the clock that controls the game hey guys it's avondale and welcome back to another episode of behind the walls where i take you behind the walls of the knock screw game show i'd like to remind you as always that if you haven't watched today's episode yet make sure you check the link in the top right hand corner of the screen so we don't spoil it for you now that you've had time to do that, I'm going to turn around and reveal my guest for today. It's Phil, who is Zeltan, who plays Bobby Groove. Hey! How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good, aren't you? Uh, good, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, it's always exciting to talk to the voices behind the Noxcrew Game Show. Nice. Yeah? I'm, I'm glad to be here, I'm glad to be here. I wasn't really aware I was going to be here until about three days ago. Hey, but... <laughs> Definitely excited. It's always a good surprise. That's right. Uh, so today, uh, Phil's going to help me talk about Sands of Time. But first, before we get into the chat, I just wanted to talk about the bug that I had in here real quick uh, so I can get it out of the way and be done with it. So if you want to follow me up through here, Phil, we'll actually head over to the redstone. Uh, drop down here. Uh, so if you guys will remember, I just started doing the API videos uh, about the system that I built to run the knock modes of the players on the server. So this worked fine uh, when we tested it. And then this map sat on the Decision Dome through the entire quarterfinal round uh, without getting played. And I had the game mode clock up and running. And then we finally get to play this game in the semifinals. And wouldn't you know it, uh, they get into the game and they can't play sand there. And it was because the clock that I had made at the spawn chunk was overriding this clock here uh, to keep it from working. And so I went to the spawn chunk, we reset the team that was in there, it was uh, Shed's turn. Uh, we, I froze the part of the clock that I thought was breaking this, started the McGixer game show. And I talked about the master clock, and I mentioned that I built it after I had a big bug in a game. Uh, this was the game that bugged out. Uh, here's the issue, right? We're always keeping our contestants in uh, in adventure mode, right? Game mode 2. Uh, so they can't break any blocks, get out of the maps, blah, blah, blah. And this timer was posing an issue because uh, I couldn't really have them place sand against just this wool like you can normally do that but it's tough to manage that when people are dropping blocks picking them up breaking blocks it's tough to guarantee that you've got the right uh, data